Good evening. Welcome to St. John's annual Santa Lucia service. Oh, please be seated. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Welcome to St. John's annual Santa Lucia service. I'm Tegan Brostrom, a senior at St. Francis High School, a member of St. John's since birth, and this is one of my favorite nights of the year. Tonight, I'm honored to serve as Santa Lucia alongside my younger, but taller, sister Piper. And while this is Piper and I's first time being the official Santa Lucia's, we have had a lot of practice. We come from a long line of proud Swedes, and growing up on each Santa Lucia Sunday, our dad would dress us up in DIY white pillowcase-looking robes and place pl plastic kid-friendly candle crowns on our heads as we paraded around our living room. I'm very excited to be continuing this tradition, but this time wearing a real robe, although I think I will miss those plastic kid-friendly candles. The story of Santa Lucia began in Sicily, Italy, where a young woman dedicated her life to Christ by serving the poor. Lucia, with the crown of candles on her head to light her path and free her hands, traveled into the depths of the catacombs, bringing food and aid to Christians hiding from persecution, until she was unfortunately killed for doing so. Then, hundreds of years later in Sweden, there was a terrible famine. But on December 13th, Taylor Swift's birthday, <laughs> a well-lit ship on Lake Vernon approached the shore carrying a woman at the helm dressed in all white with a glow around her head. Having heard the Italian version, the starving people thought it could be Santa Lucia coming to save them from this famine. The people of Sweden spend much of their year in the dark and the cold. And this story holds great importance as it symbolizes the light being brought into the darkness. The mixture of two that are often portrayed as unmixable. However, they do go together. And we see this mixing twice a day, sunrise and sunset. You aren't able to know light unless you've experienced darkness and vice versa. We frequently associate darkness with bad and light with good, but that's not completely accurate. The darkness, although scary, can provide comfort and safety and room to hide, and light is often seen as a sign of hope or wisdom, but too much light can be blinding. Within our life and our own life experiences, there will always be moments of both the light and the dark, and the mixing of the two. Regardless of what you're experiencing, whether that be blinding light or beautiful light, scary darkness or comforting darkness, God is there. In the gospel that Piper read, John outlines it for us. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. God is this light and this darkness. God is the mixing of them both. And God is also a source of consistency, just like how the sun will always set and the moon will always rise. Later in the passage, it says about John the Baptist, he himself was not the light. He only came as a witness to the light. Like John the Baptist, we, as people of God, are these witnesses. We are the witness to God's presence, his acts around us, and to his consistency. That's in both the light and the darkness. And throughout my entire life, I've found myself to be a witness. Whether that be seeing God through beautiful sunsets, a dog's tail wagging, or a stranger holding the door open for me. But I've also seen God in situations I like to call God moments. These are moments that are so much more than coincidences. God is present. On March 11th, 2020, a time we all remember so fondly, my school won a private concert in support of anti-bullying awareness. 
We signed Google Form after Google Form to win this concert. And on that day in March, the concert was held in our court. It was a true representation of spirit and community. But that night, when we all got home, we received an email that I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with, informing us that we would not be returning to the classroom. While this led to a long time without seeing friends and being in the classroom, we had the concert day that we could all look back on and smile as we logged on to Zoom. And perhaps God gave us that one day to help us get through the following two years. Another God moment happened on a chilly Thursday. I'd just taken a very rough pre-calculus test, and my day was not going great. I trudged towards the school cafeteria in hopes of brightening my day with some lunch. And as I opened the cafeteria door, one of my classmates walked out and handed me a cookie. She explained that she'd accidentally bought two, and I was just the person she was looking to give it to. This interaction and this cookie brightened my day. She brought kindness and light into my life, making this a God moment. But a God moment that I constantly think back on is one that I wasn't even present for. During the spring of my sophomore year, my dad was on a business trip in Southern California when he had a heart attack. He was out in the field serving soil as he started to experience the symptoms. He and his coworker Sam headed back to their truck and were planning on driving to the hospital. And in the truck, my dad and Sam were talking as usual until my dad suddenly went quiet. Sam proceeded to pull over removed my dad from the truck, and comforted him on the side of the road. And as they're on the side of the road, a car drives by, sees Sam and my dad, and pulls over. And the fact that there was another car on the road is already a coincidence. This is in the Imperial Valley, near the Salton Sea. There's nothing there except for dirt, dirt roads, and more dirt. The man got out of his car, approached Sam and my dad, and asked if he could pray for my dad. And my dad was a huge man of faith. He was the one that introduced me to God, asked me each and every Sunday what I'd learned in Sunday school. And the man prayed for my dad and left a prayer book at my dad's side. This is a God moment, a moment that is so much more than a coincidence. But this is also a moment full of darkness, as my dad passed away before reaching the hospital. And frankly, it's a moment that began the darkest time of my life. But in that moment, and in that period of time, there was light. The two were mixing. There's light in the stranger praying over my dad on the side of the road. There's light in the community and the people that surrounded and supported my mom, sister, and me. And there's light in celebrating, honoring, and remembering my dad tonight. This stranger that prayed over my dad could very well be the modern day Santa Lucia. And while there was no apparent white glow above his head or red sash around his waist, he brought light into the darkness. But to be a Santa Lucia or to find God moments, the sky doesn't need to open up. It doesn't need to be a huge deal. You could simply offer a smile to a homeless person, buy a cookie for a friend, or spread some, spread some kindness. So as you sing the Santa Lucia song, dance around the Christmas tree, eat the cookies, I invite you to think about how you can be a Santa Lucia for others. Bringing light amidst the darkness, mixing the two. Amen.